Hi everyone and welcome back to Eno Wonders. So today I'm going to be doing a video that someone requested which was to do a video on my um, five star reads and this video is kind of funny to put together because it made me realize how much my reading taste has changed and just how <laughs> when I started this channel I was very very into work that was like fabulous and mostly I read short stories and even if I still love those things I feel like now I'm a little bit more into creative nonfiction, a little bit more into poetry and also a little bit more concerned with things that lean a little bit more on the political side of things like it doesn't have to be overtly political but I feel like I enjoy things now which do kind of provide a commentary on that or which are a little bit more involved in the context in which they are embedded so yeah I swear this video is gonna be fun that was just my little intro so let's get on to the books the first book is one that you will have heard of already from me if you've been on this channel for a long time it's one of my ride or die books an oldie but a goodie and that is in the country by Mia Alvar this is a collection of short stories and mainly I think the thing that they explore would be diaspora and the dynamic of Filipinos from abroad interacting with ideas of home and with people who are back home, if that makes sense. The opening story to this I will never forget because it's about um, this OFW who comes home and stays with his parents and basically it just presents this very very tense dynamic between children and their parents and between what it means to come back and bring a better life to your relatives here in the Philippines so it's just it was such a nuanced exploration of that there's also another story in this which is about Ninoy and Cory Aquino I think this is the most famous story in here and it's kind of a parody on their dynamic where Ninoy is constantly dreaming of things but he doesn't know how to do it or to get those things done and then Cory is a little bit tired and exhausted sort of thinking of ways to make his dreams come true and I think that's interesting to me because well I'm not sure if this is just me but I haven't read a lot of stories that um kind of parody more modern Filipino historical figures whereas I feel like being able to parody someone like I don't know Jose Rizal or or being able to write something about uh General Luna or Gregorio del Pilar. I feel like those are things that have already been done. So this was a very interesting take on historical Filipino fiction for me. I also really, really enjoyed this one story, which is about a window cleaner um, in the World Trade Center. And she kind of has this love affair with a guy who works in that office. And they start exchanging emails and she basically cleans his office and that's how they got started talking and as she comes home from her shift and as his shift is beginning the planes crash into the world trade center and it's a very reflective story and it's kind of her ruminating on on their um small connection or their love affair and it's really sad but it's really really good and i guess what i'll say is that even if mia alvar is an author who grew up abroad she grew up in dubai and i think in new york this collection isn't alienating like if you grew up in the philippines you're not gonna read this and think this is not the filipino experience you're gonna read this and think how did she know <laughs> so yeah i would definitely recommend this the next book i want to talk about is a more recent discovery and i think i've talked about this in basically every video that i've made since i read it but i'll talk about it again because it's just that good and that is funny weather art in an emergency by olivia lang so since reading this i have read another olivia lang book which is the lonely city but i will say if you are having to choose between the two just pick up um, funny weather art in an emergency because some of the things that she talks about here she also talks about in Lonely City and I feel like this book is a better kind of entry point into Olivia Lang's literature also because this is a collection of creative nonfiction pieces of hers that she has published in different areas so it kind of gives you a better idea of her body of work her writing style and since these are meant for um, sort of 
public consumption or I guess the casual reader in these magazines it isn't too highfalutin if you're not someone who knows a lot about the world of art you're not gonna read it and be like oh my god like nosebleed or you're not going to feel alienated by this also so it's accessible but you learn a lot and you don't come out of the book feeling like you read something that wasted your time if that makes sense it's also a great book i think to read if you're going through something a little bit sad or you're not really feeling motivated i felt really really inspired after reading this book so yes 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> Next is a poetry book, and that is Deaf Republic by Ilya Kaminsky. I talked about this in my July reading wrap-up, but again, this is just a collection that I feel like everyone should read. It is set in the fictional town of Vasenka, which is um, kind of a fictionalized version of Ukraine, Poland, and Russia. And it is set during the occupation of this small town and there is an overarching narrative that runs through all of the poems and in that case i feel like even if you are someone who doesn't enjoy poetry ordinarily because of uh, things like not having a plot or finding language a little bit difficult to grapple with or not being able to right off the bat sort of understand what the poem is trying to tell you i think this is a good poetry collection for you because there is narrative running through it it's very straightforward and clear about what happens even if a lot of the images of course still jump still leap and are still interesting the language of this was beautiful and even if you are someone who enjoys poetry that is a little bit more obscure this still has something to offer you in that the language and the way that Ilya Kaminsky writes about things is just electric and i really 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 enjoyed this up next i want to recommend a single short story so this actually i read in this anthology of gregorio brillantes's work which i borrowed from my friend asia a long 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 time ago and this short story is called the cries of children on an april afternoon in the year 1950 Seven. I had to write that down in my trusty notebook just because I don't trust my memory. <laughs> and basically this short story follows um, an adolescent boy and he's sort of um, relaxing at his parents house in Tarlac. And it's very sort of serendipitous to me that this is set in Tarlac because that's where my family is from so I know that like central Luzon area very well. For those of you who are not from the Philippines, the central Luzon area, basically they're the central plains, so it's always very hot in Tarlac, it's very dry, but it can also be very humid, especially right after it rains, and the summers there, there's just this very languid feel to all of it, and this book basically follows our protagonist on that day in his life and Gregorio Brillantes was a very big fan of long short stories so the descriptions in this are just so freaking beautiful and basically it's just him going through a normal day but we see all of these flashes forward into his future and what these small things he notices will mean in the bigger scheme of his life and another theme in this which I really enjoyed was him coming to terms with philosophy and Catholic faith and sort of having an existential crisis and going back and forth between the two and since we see what happens to him in the future also the way he grapples with that that faith is very well rounded and very very interesting so yeah I would definitely recommend this to you especially if you haven't read a lot of Filipino short stories and if you'd like to see what the Filipino imagination can sort of come up with and how time can be played with in that context. I'd also like to recommend The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. Again, I talk about this book a lot, but only because it's very, very good. This is creative nonfiction. It's basically a memoir and Maggie Nelson kind of talks about her relationship with Harry Dodge, who is her husband. Harry Dodge is a trans man and this talks about their love story and her experience sort of um, bearing their child and i just found it so beautiful it's basically just a meditation on life identity love and all of these other things i think having it confined in this space which is between when she has her child like those nine months 
and also the time before Harry's mom dies. I think it's just such a beautiful way to structure something like this and such a beautiful way to write about life and these things because Maggie Nelson is just able to take you through the nuances of those things like what it means to give birth to someone, um, how it feels like to carry someone within you but then also what it's like to grapple with um, having a parent pass away, having to take care of a parent, and the very real and gritty like difficulties and emotional complexities that kind of exist in those interactions. She's just so good at describing that. And <laughs> if you're someone who likes those things, if you're the kind of person who is very into like human interest things, I would definitely recommend that you pick this book up. Okay, next is another Tita of New York. <laughs> Not Tita of Manila, but she is Filipina, and that's Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. These are essays by Gia Tolentino, and she is a Filipina who is based in New York. If you're wondering why I keep on saying where these people are based, it's because I also want to acknowledge that Filipinos who are abroad have a lot of different opportunities than Filipinos who are here, even if they're doing the same thing in the sense that they're writing and writing seriously. So yeah, I just want to put that out there. So she used to be a staff writer for The New Yorker. I'm not sure if she's still writing for them, but she also writes a lot of like book reviews, movie reviews, that kind of thing. And basically when she came up with this book and I read this book, I was like, this is my life. Like. We are roughly the same age and she writes about how media and the internet have kind of consumed our lives but she does it in a way that is so relatable because what the heck am i doing right now i'm like filming a youtube video so so it's very interesting to look at that also and she talks about certain things as well like reality tv in the early 2000s and why that's different from what's happening on YouTube but also those things are also kind of related and offshoots of each other. She also talks about a lot of things like performative feminism and how a lot of men, not all, hashtag not all men, shut up. She also talks about how a lot of men are very into like performative feminism where they love sharing these things like um, feminist Instagram things because they feel like it absolves them of the inherent misogyny and it talks about how they like all of these pretty um, like IG posts and stuff like that also because they are still shown in a very traditionally feminine way and uh, yeah and how those same men if you give them something that's more upfront and more aggressive and if you Put them in front of someone like let's say Jamila Jamil or if you have them read an essay by like Madame Judith Butler, they will not like it because because it's aggressive. It's it's a very interesting book and I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I really, really liked it. I think if you're someone who is interested in feminism, like even if you're not someone who's um, completely immersed in it or very knowledgeable about it, I feel like reading this book of essays is a very good introduction to that and I think it's something that everyone will enjoy. <laughs> like even if you are into it, you will enjoy it. I think the only people who will not enjoy this book would probably be Meninists. Up next is a book that I hear is on the BuzzFeed list of books that should be a red flag but hear me out I think that list was made with like a certain context in mind so this next book if you say this is your favorite book because you idolize the main character then I think you do need some help but if you just like this book because of the masterpiece that it is then kudos to you and let's be friends <laughs> so the book that I'm talking about is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshfeg I read this late last year and it's one of the most like haunting books that I've read but haunting in a way that was like kind of brutal <laughs> and sarcastic and funny. It wasn't haunting in like a elegant way or like a gothic way. It was haunting in in a very like blog sardonic blog writer kind of way basically it follows this um, unnamed protagonist who is very privileged very white she works in an expensive art gallery she's ivy league educated and her parents basically pass away at the beginning of the book and so to deal with her grief 
she plans on sleeping for a whole year <laughs> by getting prescription pills from her psychiatrist and basically faking some symptoms and lying to her psychiatrist so that she can be given those meds and yeah it's her attempt to sleep through a whole year and gosh like this book isn't even thick it's like around maybe 300 or 275 pages but it's so immersive and it's so interesting every time you feel like you're giving up because things are too cringe or too difficult to bear something funny is gonna happen and you're gonna get pulled back into it and one of the things that i love the most about this book is the way that her dynamic with her best frenemy is described i feel like that combination of cruelty and kindness and intimacy and hatred is just so beautiful and the way that this ends i still stand by it that this has one of the best final paragraphs or final lines in a novel that i have read in my life so far so yeah i will say i recommend this i still give it five stars but just be a little bit careful with your mental health i guess and also what you're going through at the time i wouldn't recommend this if you are feeling not so good yourself okay so let's go on to some poetry and some filipinos who are in this country <laughs> the next book is a poetry book and that is elsewhere held and lingered by conchitina cruz i interviewed ching b on this channel we had a conversation on let's fight i'll leave a link to it down below if you're interested this is one of my og favorite collections and i think it's something that has <laughs> withstood the test of time this book also has an overarching narrative as well i feel like that's something i'm realizing i enjoy in poetry <laughs> and basically we follow a persona who is in a marriage that is unraveling and she's also in love with with someone else and this is just such an interesting exploration of desire and of desire as a mechanism of identity. There are some poems in here that are more straightforward and which I feel are easy to kind of engage with and get into. And then there are other poems in here that will just drive you crazy because the form is so good, like poetry in the footnotes of the page only, poetry that is multiple choice, and uh like this book is an oldie but a goodie for me it just never gets old so if you can get your hands on a copy of this please please do now speaking of old but gold this next one is a book that i read maybe like my second year of college which was so long ago that was like 2008 <laughs> but i think that this is still a really really good book to read um and that is the unbearable lightness of being by milan kundera Whenever I think of something that has sort of influenced the things that I think about and the way that I think about things, I always keep on coming back to this book. And I feel like I'm not sure if it's because I read it at such a formative time in my life or because the things in it just really, really resonate. But either way, um, if it's something that can sort of resonate when I was 17, and it's something that can resonate now that I'm 30. I feel like it's something that would be worth recommending to you guys. I think the one way that I would describe this book is that, yes, it's fiction, but it's also very, very philosophical. And it's philosophical in a way that's very engaging. It's not like Sophie's World, which honestly is like a textbook disguising itself as fiction. It's like, <laughs> it's like fiction that kind of does philosophical things if that makes sense and basically we follow a number of characters throughout their lifetimes and it's told in this very very omniscient point of view so we can see their past their future what they're thinking of the dynamic between these different characters and their relationships and the ways in which they interact with one another and i remember one thing from this book that i think I've been thinking about a lot lately is there's this part where it kind of juxtaposes the relationship that one of the characters, Sabina, has with Franz and um, the relationship that Sabina has with this guy, Tomas. So it basically talks about people and their lives or their personalities as sheet music. When you're younger, um, the sheet music isn't set in stone yet, like you can kind of change around the melody of who you are and so it's easier to form bonds that are integral and which last a long time and which are strong and binding 
because you both make room to kind of work uh, each other's melody into each other's sheet music. And so for Sabina and Tomas, that's why um, Sabina was kind of very in love with Tomas. It was because she met him when she was younger and because of that, um, like, she was kind of able to integrate, in a way, part of him into her personality. So in that way, he felt like someone that was very, very integral to her life. Whereas Franz, this guy that she gets with later on in the book, is someone that she met later on in life. So it was hard for them to integrate things into each other's um, like vocabulary of meaning. Like, something that meant love to him would not mean love to her and it's just so beautiful i feel like that's a concept that i'm still very interested in like the slippage of meaning and why meaning changes over time and yes read this <laughs> if you're an introspective person and if you don't really mind um, a slow moving plot i think that this book would be really really good to read and last but not the least is a short story collection by one of my professors. So I would like to recommend On Cursed Ground by Vicente Garcia Grayon. This book is again something that I read back in college, but I think it's still one of my favorite um, short story collections just because I don't think it gets enough credit for what it does with um, the stories that it tells and also the attention to detail with which they're written. I will actually get this book right now and show you guys as well why I don't think the publication of this book gave it any justice. Look at this cover. Like, why? Why? That's like word art. <laughs> That's word art. And this is old actually it's in not such bad condition except that this is peeling but yeah it's not very beautifully published and the inside looks like a word document Ooh. wow this was so long ago this was when my friend austir um had an exhibit in makati sport speak anyway yeah so the way that it's published is really really like sucky but it's really really good and the stories in it are just so beautiful my favorite story in this is one called trio and it's about a throuple <laughs> basically it follows uh the main guy who is like the third wheel in the throuple because the other two are um like a couple basically and uh they invite him into the the threesome because the girl is one of his very good friends and basically the object of his desire and this book just talks about feeling left out and how you can be so isolated even if you're already with the person that you want even if you're already invited into this group dynamic and it's just ah oh, it's so beautiful 10 out of 10 would recommend this book also talks about a lot of things like coming of age i guess loss of innocence and also queerness like there's a lot of um discussion of sexuality in this book and also an awakening from having your head in the sand when it comes to political things the titular story titular i feel like that word is so <laughs> titillating so <laughs> the titular story is about siblings who discover a dead body in their parents hacienda and all of the things that that implies it's just it's really really good <laughs> and yes i would recommend it again to any of you who like good short stories and that's it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and thanks again to the person who asked for this video i hope that you enjoyed it and if you have read any of these books or if you like these books if you didn't like these books please let me know in the comments below and also feel free to share your five star recommendations with me i would love to know what they are Thanks again. See you next time. Bye.